Hello everyone and welcome back to Corporal Space Program. We will be trying to go to the moon, land on the moon, take two tours there, and then also uh, come back in one piece. Now I went ahead and built this rocket off camera just because it took me a little while to come up with a design that I think will work for us. In fact, I even had to fly around in a plane to gather some more uh, little bits of science just so we can unlock the fuel lines and these fuel lines will help us with a longer initial burn uh, as we'll use fuel from the exterior tanks into the main engine as well and these booster rockets per se will drop off rather quickly but still leave us with a fuel tank when they do so that is a bonus we also have some solid rocket boosters just for overkill and let's go ahead and launch this puppy now these missions here will provide us with a lot of money a decent amount of reputation and we will use them to our advantage and hopefully stage some um, better unlocks and some better science to help us going forward. Eventually we're going to have to set up a comm network and that comm network will provide us with a nice kind of useful drones and then we can worry about doing unmanned missions, maybe going to Minmus, maybe near the end we'll set up a, a, some space stations, even maybe a moon base and see how much you guys enjoy that whole process. It's kind of my favorite thing to do is set up a moon base. So we'll get rid of the solid ones. They'll crash in together, take out one of their friends, and we'll just start really accelerating at this point to space. And we're going to start going lateral uh, fairly quickly. The moon is right on the horizon, basically. Um, you can see it right there. In fact, the sooner we start going sideways, the better in this case. So we will pretty much push this thing all the way to try and pick up as much speed with these four uh, extra engines as possible. And we'll watch as the orbit line just increases uh, quicker and quicker on this. Now, in theory, you don't have to make any like course planning to go to the moon. You really just have to fly straight at it as you go here. Negative one degree kind of offset, though. Not too bad to have. There goes our four pods, and they just float away elegantly. And now we are just going to burn pretty much at the exact angle of the horizon going forward now during this stage you can mess with your descending and ascending node we are at point uh, two so if you go to the left here I believe in this case that'll get us pointed and actually really decrease that down uh, the bet the closer to zero the better especially for kind of long distance shots as you know one degree can add up to a lot over time but 0 0.4 0 0.5 I think is a perfectly reasonable place to be so let's keep on picking up speed we're skipping the orbital phase we are going straight to the moon we don't have to waste fuel trying to get this into a circular orbit we can pretty much burn directly there since the moon was in a such uh, good position initially at launch and you can plan that out just speed up time kind of watch the moon come across the surface here so we're just burning prograde and that will push out our node really well you can see we're also basically pointing directly at the moon. The moon is right there in front of us. In fact, let's let's go ahead and point directly at it. There we go. So that's really increasing our speed. We're going to have to use an intermentary kind of stage to finish this off, but it shouldn't take a whole lot of extra fuel. Um, it's just one of those things. That extra uh, fuel tank that we just dropped off actually will return to Kerbin. Uh, the periaps is below the 70,000 threshold. So we, uh, you know, don't want to leave too much trash in our local system. You do technically run the risk of that thing 
coming in and smacking your ships, so gotta keep space clean, folks. Gotta keep it clean and safe so you can eventually set up uh, bases and things without having to worry about it. I mean, the chance of it happening is rather low. Okay, so we are captured here, and you can see our orbit is going to get kicked rather nicely into this kind of angle, but what I want to do is try and get this a little bit more straight. So let's see if I can't do that at all. And we also want to get our periaps down as low as possible. I'm shooting for about 80, 60,000 meters. And that will allow our lander pretty much a good amount of fuel to actually get here and dock back to this main vessel. And this main vessel will then take us back to Kerbin. So let's go ahead and save. We're quick saving here. Just in case anything happens, we can reload at this point. I think we're in a very good position to get this mission uh, as a success. As we move forward, you pretty much do this really weird kind of orbit here into the moon. You're now in the sphere of influence of the moon itself. We'll come around. Pretty much right at the periaps. And start burning retrograde so we can uh, get this thing all nice and circularized. Now our our orbit here is rather odd. Um, I don't like how off-center it is. So what we'll do, we'll add a maneuver and we'll just kind of tweak this a bit. Just to make it nice and neat. And we'll just do about a 70 meter per second burn here. back into pilot view it should only take about 10 seconds to get this velocity that we need and we have plenty of fuel to do so I'm not really worried about that I mean this is plenty of fuel to go back to Kerbin uh, just fine so let's go ahead and just take care of this right now chase the node a little bit here Now we do not have those external batteries, so every movement that I'm making is uh, a little dangerous. We're gonna point north, and that's going to prevent us from tumbling around the planet. You can see that we uh, will still go around it in terms of the side, different sides will face the planet, but the nose will always point upwards, and that's going to help us with docking later on. Uh, we're gonna control from here, and take control of Valentina Kerbin as she takes us to the surface of the moon. Um, we are actually probably going to want to get rid of this maneuver node. Yeah, that's a that's a little bit better of an angle, I think. Still a little crappy, but whatever. Nothing you can do about that. Uh, it's better to adjust your angles kind of on the sides of your orbit so that you can adjust the whole thing at once and uh, it can just kind of tilts in place. So we're going to go around to the far end of the orbit for a couple reasons. The first reason being that we can actually lower our orbit much easier from this side. So let us disconnect here. We are now free. Go ahead and save the pet point retrograde real quick. And at this point, we're going so slow. We're only going 157 meters per second. So anything we do is going to do a lot of stuff. There we go. So we will lower this down. 
to, I think, 10,000 or so. And then from there, we'll do the final kind of landing burns. Um, the nice thing about doing this as well is you can see our orbit line is ahead of the plane itself. And in doing so, that's going to allow us to get there first. And hopefully, if we land quickly enough, we might be able to land, do a bit of science, and immediately take off. Uh, we might not catch up to this thing. This thing is going almost 600 meters per second. But we can at least get into a shallow orbit so that we can eventually meet up with it. So we're going to go ahead and burn. Really start killing the velocity here. And this will give us kind of where we will be staying in the long term. Now I want to try and find kind of a flatter area. We don't really have any extra fuel to try and mess with that. Okay, so here we are. We're going to quick save again and just come down to the surface. A little bit at a time. And I do these longer burns. I do these very slow burning descents. Um, really just trying to maintain about a quarter thrust. Um, I'm not great at judging that kind of big burn to just come to a perfect stop right at the surface. So I do these longer ones at a lower thrust to try and balance it out a little bit. You can see we're actually coming down a little too hot, so I'll speed up a little bit more. In fact, I'm going to speed up a lot more. There's our shadow. You can use this to really judge your height, as this is saying sea level instead of actual surface level. So it's going to be off. We're going to be on a slightly gentle slope, which I'm fine with. Where's my shadow at? Where's my shadow? Oh, there it is. And you want to try and just touch down at seven or so meters per second. It doesn't have to be exactly that. And there you go. We are on the surface of the moon. Looks really nice. You know, the landing gear, now that they have kind of shocks in them, really softens the landing. And at this point, we'll go ahead and log the pressure data. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? Don't go just tumbling around. Relax. What are you doing? Okay, we're gonna have to use stability control here, which is going to drain our battery kind of consistently. Not great, so let's log temperature. Take a crew report. We don't really have the luxury of staying here. So we're gonna set the space plane back as our target. And pretty much just take right off again. And we're gonna try and go this direction initially here. Yeah, it looks like that's the direction I want to go. So first things first, let's get into an orbit around the moon. And then go from there. I don't think we're going to have enough to really get in any any sort of interaction with the space plane initially here, but we can try it. We'll just increase this line and it'll tell us our closest kind of approach here. How's that? What, what is that at? That's about four kilometers, which I think is pretty good actually. 
to just kind of land, touch down on the moon, and then take off again. So we're going to speed up a little bit here. We are then going to point prograde, and this is going to extend. Oh, that's prograde to the ship itself. Let's go to orbit prograde. Target. So you can see the target is moving about 332 meters per second. We need to actually stop that. So you, pro you point retrograde to the target. You're going to bring that down. That's going to change our orbit completely and try and get that to match theirs a little bit longer. And the closer you get this thing to zero, the better. Now we are going to miss it a little bit here, but we can make adjustments later on. As long as I'm able to get this target pretty much down to zero now. Come on, come on, get it, get it, get it. Okay, so nine kilometers is the closest that we're going to come to it again, so we'll just go ahead and speed up a little bit more. Let's check our battery, make sure, because we're going to be using a lot of battery on this little docking maneuver here. So we're coming back into interacting with it. Point retrograde again. Try and stop our movement. And there we go. So this is what I want. I can now see the spacecraft and we can try just burning basically directly at it. And we'll, we'll shoot for just about 10 meters per second or so. We're going to have to do this a couple times. And we'll get closer to it every time we do it. And you can see the direction actually stops following the object as well so you had to kind of pull it with you to get that right and there we have pretty much a really close intersect here less than one kilometer and we will go ahead and point retrograde so that we can stop our velocity when we get close enough And there she is, she's right up there. And us stopping is good. I can then take a look at the aircraft. We'll retract our landing gear. We don't really need that in space anymore. It's gonna be really dark and hard to see for you guys. And we're just really tapping. We don't have any mono propellant on this thing. Uh, we don't have that technology unlocked. That would make this a whole lot easier. And now we just had to point north, I believe. Get above it, because it is pointing directly north as well. And I had to actually clear that node. We had a parachute in there, um, but it's actually taking up the space. We're gonna do the same on that connection as well because obviously it's still there. Uh, that means it's kind of stuck. Not a great thing, but uh, oh well. Okay, so we are stopped fully. 
And let's check out this. We are going to have to click this to couple the node. And that's just going to fly into space. There we go. And we can go ahead and let's use the smaller vessel probably to do the docking. We're going to target this node as the new target. First off, we need to point correctly here. So that we can kind of go over the spacecraft itself. Again, if you have monopropellant, a whole lot easier to get this all lined up because you have more control axes to uh, use. Okay. Pop around to retrograde so we can stop pretty much right over it. And I enjoy docking. Docking to me is very relaxful. Um, it's a little stressful at times if you're on kind of a budget in terms of fuel and things like that. But otherwise, you just enjoy the, the ballet that is getting these things together. There we go. Half a meter per second. We'll come pretty much right there. The magnet will grab us, and there you go. We are docked. Back to the main ship. We will shut down the small engine. We will control from the main craft. Now, each side technically has a heat shield, so it doesn't matter which side I kind of approach the atmosphere, uh, which is pretty cool. I don't know about our scientific ex experiments. They are kind of in an awkward spot. Um, and we're basically going to be winging it at this point on. Let's see about getting, getting back home. Now we want to use the least amount of fuel to get out of orbit here. Okay. Point this direction. Perfect. And this looks like this will be our only mission this episode. As the missions get a little bit more complicated, you need to uh, spend a lot more time doing these kind of setups and also getting all this stuff working correctly. So here we go. This is our burn to leave the moon. Goodbye, moon. In fact, we can do a crew report here. We just bring home an extra 10 science. We do have two pilots to do crew reports from. Okay, there we go. Or nap. There we go. That will take us out of the moon's influence. You can see we actually kind of kick out there a little ways. Uh, could, mm, would it be possible to visit Min Miss? Is that something we want to do? We don't really have any more crew reports to do, so it would be kind of a waste. We don't have enough scientific instruments to make that worth it. So we'll go around here real quick. Point retrograde. And lower or carbon orbit down so that we will fall back into the atmosphere. Hopefully land on an ocean. Um, we don't really have enough parachutes to land anywhere else. So that's something I'm going to have to look at as we get closer. But you want to try and capture about 30,000 meters or so. It looks like we're going to re-mess with the orbit of the moon if we technically went back around Kerbin. No point in doing that. We are just going home. So we're going to try and capture about...
25,000 or so meters above the surface. It's going to be a rather warm entry. We could do it multiple times, but I don't think you guys want to sit through all that. You want to get me home. So we are going to get rid of the rockets at this point. We no longer need them. And let's go home. We'll just slowly watch as Kerbin, the moon going out there in the background where we just were. We'll make sure we're pointing retrograde. How's our electrical charge? We're at 23 or so. Not too worried about that anymore. Point retrograde again. Make sure we're really doing that. Now this little bubble of a cockpit, that might be a little hotter. So I'm going to try and keep that above the horizon so that is not catching as much heat. And here we go. We're, we're pretty much at... <laughs> We're coming in at 3,100 meters per second, and I'm not sure what's going to survive here in this case. The front heating up. The whole spacecraft now heating up. We'll just do the normal stability control. We don't really need anything else. Now I can kind of dump the heat off if I just tap okay we're, we're just gonna have to try and maintain a retrograde here oh man that that oh that cabin it's getting really heated up and I don't like it so I'm having to try and angle it a little bit as we go down through the atmosphere you can just see it's it's really just barely hanging on and if that goes um, we won't have parachutes and if we don't have parachutes obviously we're not gonna be stopping anytime soon are we over the ocean I don't I can't tell it's too dark but it looks like we're actually over the desert. Maybe. What is that? Is that surface? Is that ground? It looks like ground. This mission may end in a failure or at least minimally killing the tourists. But if nothing else, they get a wonderful view of the heating effects the horizon line coming into the distance for them as well. I hope they paid good money for this. Because it looks like we're coming down real hot over a desert. Kind of wish we had that third parachute. That's kind of what we need. Okay, so we're going to jettison the heat shields. Maybe that'll make us lighter. Oh, no, no, no. I need to keep stability control on, apparently, because aerodynamics is not in our favor here. Okay, it's safe to deploy the parachutes. We will do so. We can now turn off stability control because they will provide enough drag to keep us pointed in the right direction, hopefully. Oh my goodness, I hope I hope we land this. It's kind of on the dark side. I wish you guys could see a little bit better. But everyone looks like they're returning safely. We have scientific instruments here. 
still intact from the atmosphere, which is great. We're going 100 meters per second. There goes the heat shield. And the heat shield explodes, marking the landing zone for us. The other heat shield touching down somewhere else in the desert. And we'll come down. We're going to land about 7 meters per second. I don't know the impact tolerance of the MK1 crew cabin here or anything like that. Seven point three meters, four meters per second, and we are touching down now. And we're down. There we go. That is us. We are back on our home world, safe and sound. That's good. Jebediah hanging out in the cockpit, and you know what? We'll bring Valentina out for an EVA report. No real science. I kind of came here already. Um, can't plan a flag or anything, but we have succeeded in this mission. If you look at the contracts tab, we have explored the moon, ferried these two back, and we recover the vessel. That mission will then complete, giving us a huge chunk of change, some science to look at. We're at 189 total science now, or total funds, basically doubled to 866,000. We can look at upgrading some things. Um, the crew tours actually leveled up. That's good. They're now one-star tours. I don't know if that means they pay more eventually. Who knows? And if we look in our science, we can look into getting two parts. Two part upgrades. Um, let's see. Protective shells. Not really something I care about right now. We're not doing anything that requires that. Landing... Escape systems, some proper landing gear for a vehicle would be okay. MK1 lander cans and monopropellant, which would be cool. Space exploration. Uh-huh. And electronics, so we can get solar panels and things. I'm thinking... Before we decide, it would be best to see what our missions are. So, Exploring Minmus is a mission. Ferry to Taurus to the moon and back again. We can do that. Uh, anything else from the moon? Science data from the surface of the moon, we can do that. Conduct observational surveys from about... From space, essentially, so while on orbit, we can look into doing that as well. And they're all crew reports. So, I think next time we're going to go back to the moon, and we're going to unlock things specifically for the moon, and that is going to be... I think we want these smaller engines for our... our stuff here let's see what's the ISP on this uh, ISP is 320 that's pretty good advanced construction don't need that landing don't need that I think we need electronics for solar panels if we're gonna do a long kind of a longer trip out we'll need solar panels to maintain energy we will also need I could get a lander can and actually do that for the proper lander instead of using the other one. But I'm, I'm, as long as the other one's still working, I'm fine with it. But it also gives us monopropellant. Don't need any more landing gear right now. Don't need that. If anything, we just need more thrust. Like the Poodle liquid fuel engine would be pretty cool. I mean, I think we do have some larger parts that we can use if we unlock that so let's let's go more thrust and some electrical charge and we'll worry about maybe exploring the moon surface some more next episode so if you guys enjoyed today's episode feel free to subscribe to my channel for more creative goodness go ahead and hit that like button so i know you guys like kerbal space program 
go ahead and check out my other videos. I do build some other cool stuff. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next episode.